Everyone likes to say that fall is the perfect time to feed your soil, but this is heavily dependent on the type of fertilizer you use, when it's applied, and even the circumstances that the soil is under. So today's video, we are going to answer that question. Should you be fertilizing in fall? And what types of fertilizer are best applied during the fall season. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley and I'm a Bachelor's of Science in Soil Science. I've been working in the world of agriculture for 15-ish years and I've been gardening since I was five years old. So I like to take all of that science and apply it to the garden. And in this case, I will say that the recommendation I'm about to give in regards to what to do really doesn't apply at all to large-scale farmers. That situation is entirely different than when we're talking about little tiny beds. So if you guys want more videos on agriculture sized food production, then let me know in the comments down below because not all rules transfer linear. And in the case of fall fertilizer, I do truly believe this isn't something that can just translate linear. It has a little bit of nuance to it based on how much soil you're dealing with. So I think one of the really key things to look at when it comes to whether or not you need to apply fertilizer in the fall is actually what conditions the soil is under. And when it's under those conditions, exactly what is the soil doing? So number one is that when it gets to around 10 degrees Celsius, and when I say 10 degrees Celsius, I mean the physical soil itself, not the great outdoors. But And that is something important to keep in mind because while ambiently it might may be much colder, such as frost, for example, the soil itself can stay warm for an extended period of time. And this is very true in the event that you do have high levels of mulch, the soil is exposed to really sunny spaces, maybe it's in a raised bed above ground. All of these things will keep that soil warmer later into the season. But when the soil proper gets to be around that 10 degrees Celsius mark, microbes do begin to slow down. And the slowdown process means a number of different things. Number one, it means that there's less nutrient cycling and therefore the microbes are doing less when it comes to the decomposition process. So essentially what's happening when we hit that 10 degrees Celsius mark is that things are beginning to slow down. And when things slow down in the world of microbes, this means less nutrient cycling. And nutrient cycling isn't just simply turning big chunks of banana into fine particulate matter. It's a little bit more than that. It can obviously include that really mechanical destruction, but there is some nutrient or mineralization, as we like to call it, that does take place when microbes are active. Not to mention, your plant roots also begin to slow down when the soil begins to hit this temp. So this is true, obviously very true for annuals, but it is also true for your perennials. While they're not completely dead, they definitely have backed off and the plants themselves are beginning to slow down for the season, meaning they don't actually utilize as much nutrients. So with that being said, it's very obvious that we don't wanna use anything that is a fast release, which means if you do have leftover granular miracle grow, maybe you have some leftover liquid fish emulsion, whatever the case is, these are highly bioavailable products that if you do apply them this time of year, they will be lost. We know this for a fact. Now, this has been published 10 Ways to Sunday when it comes to the science side of things. So I don't have to reference one specific study. You literally can just type it in and you're going to find a ton of them because this is something that soil science is pretty obsessive over. We obsess over this from a agricultural production standpoint and ways to make sure farmers don't waste money. We also actually look this at this from an environmental standpoint and a reclamation standpoint because soil science, when it's involved in the process of environmental reclamation, oftentimes we are using fertilizers in these instances to help give a boost to otherwise dead soil. And we oftentimes have to keep in mind how much nutrient is being lost from the system because of its downstream effects. So when it comes to your garden, when it comes to large-scale agriculture, when it comes to reclamation, if you have a fast-release fertilizer being added to your soil, you will lose up to 50% of the nitrogen that is applied minimum, guaranteed. This can vary 
depending on how warm your soil stays, how long your winter is, how much moisture there is, does your soil truly freeze? All of these things will exasperate or make it not as bad when it comes to the physical nitrogen loss. So fast release fertilizers that are just left over and you want to get rid of, probably not doing you much good, probably doing you more good being applied to your compost actually, because that is warm. It is microbially active. It has really high moisture and it will be utilized much, much quicker and it'll be much more beneficial for getting that compost turning around a little bit faster. So let's talk about something that is not fast release and is considered a slow release and that is organic fertilizers. Now, compost falls under that umbrella. Manures fall under this umbrella. French composting falls under this umbrella. We are talking quite literally anything that is organic at one point living and then being applied to our soil. So this can act as a food source throughout the winter until things really do truly freeze up for those microbes. It can also act as a way to reduce, particularly if we top dress with it, meaning almost mulch with it in a way. It will reduce potential mechanical erosion from water and snow, and it actually drastically reduces the loss of nutrients through leaching and the levelization, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, literally all of them are included in this. And that is because the nutrients is held in more complex format, such as a stem of a plant or leaf mulch or an entire banana that's been trench dug in. And that will begin to decompose and break up when things warm up in the spring. So organic material that falls under the slow release, like I said, is compost, manure, you know, feathers, feather meal, alfalfa meal, bone meal, things of that nature. Things that I would highly recommend you are incredibly cautious about adding can include things like fish emulsion, blood meal, entire food scraps, crushed and or whole eggs. Now, there are other ones. Geek crew, please listen down below because I'm missing probably a ton of them. Reason being that some of these are highly bioavailable, meaning they are very quickly bioavailable and very likely will be leached and lost. But beyond that, my main concern is critters. So these things attract rodents and omnivores, scavengers, if you will. It can attract things like birds, which is whatever. It can attract things like raccoons or cats, which again, whatever. But if you have a vole issue, if you have a mouse issue, if you have a rat problem, and you want to ensure that they don't destroy your garden over the winter months, do not put this in, on, or around your soil in any capacity. Okay, so next one is inorganic fertilizers, conventional fertilizers, if you will. Now, like I said, a fast, re fast release leftover version of this can be leached and shouldn't be applied in excess. However, if your soil is still warm, your perennials are still kind of growing, meaning if you do to apply a little bit of fertilizer responsibly, based on what the instructions say to put in, you can give them a little bit of an extra boost to overwinter better into the winter months. This stands for shrubs, trees, perennial plants, you name it. If you have already planted your garlic, you're noting some greenery popping up. There's roots there that can uptake nutrients. You may want to supply that plant with some. If you are a big grass person or if you have a lot of fruit, trees, or shrub, you actually may consider adding something that is highly available in potassium in particular because this is known to help with the winter hardiness via building up a stronger, better root system. So for example, the ProMix liquid formula, the root booster formula that I talk about using all the time earlier in the season could also be applied during the fall season and you could see some benefits from that. But like I said, this stuff will leach, phosphorus will bind with frozen plant material and be washed away in the spring. It doesn't necessarily contribute to more microbe activity just because the temperatures are still lower and therefore I wouldn't go into this excessively. A slow release fertilizer may be an option to choose from, but you still will have some losses from that. If you choose to go the slow release granular conventional fertilizer route, you want to make sure that you incorporate it somehow into the soil itself. 
You don't want it on the surface because the surface will have greater levels of mechanical degradation or release from the sun, the snow, the wind, the water, you name it. So if you can dig it into that soil profile to an extent, that will help enormously with reducing any losses that you may see. So if I was to make a determination as to whether or not I wanted to add fertilizer in the fall, I would actually go for something that has high in carbon. I would go for a compost or I would go for a manure. I would top dress this, maybe slightly incorporate it into that little bit of top soil. And this will help feed the microbes later into the season, early in the spring, reduce soil erosion, while also letting some nutrients leach into the soil profile below. It will give a boost to any perennial crops and get them going earlier in the spring. It'll also make them stronger going into the winter. I personally wouldn't add any sort of conventional fertilizer in any capacity, slow release or quick release. I also wouldn't add anything organic wise, whether it's fish emulsion, bone meal, blood meal, that sort of thing. I also would not add entire food scraps for the risk of potential critters. Your other option is just to do nothing at all, which also would work just fine. And something that necess doesn't necessarily fall under the world of nutrients, but is highly beneficial to be added in the fall is things like mycorrhizal fungi. So if you have trees, shrubs, perennials in particular, soil that you do not intend to, stirb, to, to disturb for years on end, the application of a mycorrhizal fungi inoculant into that soil surface right now is actually heavily valuable. The reason for that is because it will go dormant, obviously, for the winter months. However, when things begin to warm up in the spring, when the moisture is very high from all that deposited snow material, that level of moisture, that continual supply of moisture can and will result in a very robust mycorrhizal fungi system. And it is probably one of the best ways to ensure that the fungal spores you are adding end up doing well. Applying this stuff in the dead of summer means you have to really watch watering, you really have to mulch, all that sort of stuff. Application now can make a pretty big difference. But if you have this in an annual bed that you intend to dig up a lot, I personally just wouldn't go for it. But that's a discussion for a different day. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time.